So of course, uh, we 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 just we just bought the dealer. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's not the only thing either. <laughs> over the, the thing that came over from the Catholic Church also was the Trinity teaching. You know, and the Nicene Creed. I believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three and one, etc., etc. You see, all of those things. We bought that one too. There's no three gods. In Indonesia, the Muslims tell me, you're all Christian, you Christians are all heathen. You've got three gods. Of course, I can go through the list, you know, oh, no, 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 we haven't got three gods. You know, we've only got one, but there's three manifestations of God. Now you've got three gods. So, I said, well, have it your way. I don't care anyway, because I don't even believe in the Trinity teaching. Jesus Christ said, I am my father or one. So I don't know what you do with that. He didn't say we agree together. He didn't say that we work together. He didn't say that we're going to try and, you know, uh, combine in our function. No, he said we are one. That's all. And then the Holy Spirit. Well, I think he's holy. But God is spirit too. And I think he's holy. So that makes... We've only got one God. All right? Yes. So now... That's not the only thing. So there's two things. We've got hell. We've got now, we've got the Trinity teaching. The third thing. Why do we worship on Sunday? I'm going to tell you. Because in 8322, Constantine became the emperor of Rome. And he was a Christian. Well, a little while later, after he got going, you know, got his feet on the ground and he's running. <coughs> Uh, he said, now, the Jews, they meet on Saturday. Of course, Saturday is their holy day. It's the Sabbath, you see. But now, we're not Jews, so we're not going to meet on Saturday. We're Gentiles. And we're Gentile Christians. So, we're going to have our own day of worship. And guess what he picked? He picked Sunday. Why? Well, that was the day for the worship of the sun god. Oh, God, help us. Mm -hmm. And we bought it. We bought it. And then, to make it stick, to make Sunday to be the real day of worship, they had to make the resurrection on Sunday morning. <laughs> Very bare, I mean, he's, he, he dies on Sunday afternoon. He rises Sunday morning, he's got three days and three nights to fit him down, I don't know how you do it. But anyway, it's all right. And in Matthew chapter 20, 28, verse 1, it says, And as it dawned toward the first day of the week, because that, that cemented the whole thing, you see. The first day of the week, Sunday, that's the day of worship because it's the day of the resurrection. Well, that phrase is not even in the Greek language. It's not found anywhere in the Bible, first day of the week. In fact, in the Greek language, it simply says, as it dawned toward one of the Sabbaths. Mm. Mm. Now, I'm only telling you that because I, I, I want you to know that, you see, there are so many things in Christianity that have really thrown us for a loop, and, and many of us have not been able to sort it all out. So I'm just sharing that with you. Now let's get down to business. It says here, Their minds were blinded, for until this day there remains the same blood untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. In verse 16, Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, when it shall turn to the Lord, when what? When you shall turn to the Lord. How are you going to turn to the Lord? Where is the Lord? Up there? No, I don't think so. The Lord is not up there, but when you turn to the Lord, you are turning in. You are turning inward. For this is where the Christ lives. This is where the Christ is. This is the Lord. The word Lord in the Bible generally means the owner. He's the owner. Mm -hmm. He owns you. Your body does not belong to you. So it says here, when shall turn to the Lord, the veil will be taken away. 
So when we turn to the Lord, we are beginning to see something very, very different to what we used to see before. And it says here, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty. Nobody living under a law is at liberty. So if you've got some law still functioning in your life, the Ten Commandments or anything else, you are not at liberty. You're not free because the law will put demands upon you. And so there is unwritten laws in Christianity today. Unwritten laws, but they are kept by the church. You must not do this, you must not do that. I'm not going to go into all that stuff. But I want you to know that you've got to get free if you want to be an expression of Christ. You cannot have any, any um, impediment in your life Otherwise, the expression of Christ will be marred somewhere, somehow, and it will not be complete. But when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil will be taken away. And the veil must be taken away from our mind. And how are we going to do that? Well, it says here in verse 18, But we all, so that's everybody, we all, with open face, no veil. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what is the veil? In John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. In chapter 12, and verse 12, it says, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to those who believe in his name. In verse 14 it says, And the Word was made flesh, and we lost him. The Word was made flesh, and all we ended up with was Jesus. That's what we ended up with. We lost him. Where's the word? He's gone. Now, he's flesh and blood. He's Jesus. And I go to many churches and that's all I ever hear. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, do this. Jesus, do that. I want to tell you, Jesus was a man. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 it says that God said let us make man. There was the man. Who was that man? That man was Christ Jesus. Why is the Jesus put on there? Because you see there was going to be many Jesus but only one Christ. Only one Christ but many Jesus. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 the Apostle Paul said don't you know your body is the temple of God the word temple there in the Greek language is simply the word naos which means the most holy place mm -hmm. within you is the most holy place on the whole planet sure. for this is where God dwells in you and in every man on the face of this earth, Christ dwells. The problem is the majority don't know. They don't know. 